Hey, yo, what is going on guys? Kalihandra here and welcome back to another episode of Mugayon. Today, we're going to be building the Port of Legaspi. I mean, we're going to be recreating the Port of Legaspi, uh, which is what you're seeing on the screen right now. And we're also going to be making some major changes to Magayon. Um, we're going to be doing the first of many major changes. Um, we're going to be doing the waterfronts you can see here. Um, this waterfront um, takes inspiration from many different places, um, the first of which is what I just shown you, which is the um, Embarcadero de Legaspi, or the Port of Legaspi. Um, and I'm also taking inspiration from other um, Southeast Asian cities, which is essentially what Magayon is. If you don't know what Magayon is, um, Magayon is a new city skyline series that I'm starting based on the area around the world's perfect cone volcano, which is Mayon. And it takes inspiration from those uh, various Southeast Asian cities, um, more specifically um, from the Philippines. But instead of um, being grounded in reality, uh, like Calihandria, which was my previous series, so if you watched that series, I'll link down below. Um, Cal uh, Magayon will have a little bit of an alternate reality to it. Um, I'm going to be explaining it a little bit more in detail uh, as the video progresses, but I'm going to be showing you um, my inspiration for what I'm building right now, which is Manila Bay in the Philippines. Um, sorry for the low quality time lapse um, in this first part of the video. I had some troubles with the encoding and exporting this video, so bear with me, guys. Yeah, I'm, but I assure you, it's gonna get better as this, as the video progresses. Um, for those of you who um, are wondering what I'm building right now, I am as part of the waterfront. Everything that is near water is part of this major change that we're doing right now. Um, I'm taking inspiration once again from Manila Bay and the surrounding areas. It wasn't visible in the map, um, the small rivers, canals, and estuaries. I don't know what they're called actually. Um, but yeah, I was looking at them and I'm trying to recreate them right now. This is what you're seeing here is Ross Boulevard. Somehow, somewhat Ross Boulevard. This is my interpretation of Ross Boulevard. And speaking of Ross Boulevard from history, context, and trueness, um, for those of you, um, if you're watching this in the future, because it still hasn't happened for me, um, it was the recent 500 year anniversary of Magellan landing in the Philippines, which was the first time man has ever crossed to Asia without going through Africa. Because people used to believe that the earth was flat and that if you um, go west from Europe, from Spain specifically, you just end up at the other end of the world. Oh, it's raining. Sorry for the audio quality, but you know. It's been raining here for the past few days now. There's a low pressure area. And I'm sorry if you're going to hear a little bit of small raining sounds in the background. But I'm trying to limit the noise as much as I can. Anyways, before I get distracted, once again, um, yeah, I was saying it's the 500 year anniversary of Magellan landing to the Philippines. If you don't know who Magellan is, Magellan is the first person to circumnavigate the Earth through the Pacific Ocean. So he proved those people who believe that the Earth was flat wrong because he went to um, the other side of the world without going around Africa. So, you know, if you understand. With that being said. I'm, uh, I'm kind of thinking, but I'm not being too um, s too serious on this, I'm thinking Magellan would be the Philippines, what the Philippines could have been if Spain or any other country wasn't able to colonize it. Like the only country in Southeast Asia that I know, if correct me if I'm wrong, but that I know that, that wasn't colonized was Thailand. and. A lot of our culture, sadly, has got gotten erased due to colonialism, and a lot of us won't really know, and we were miseducated on what we really were before the Spanish came. Um, the unifying thread, actually, to Philippine history is colonialism. What we learn in school and what is taught 
to us was mostly just the three main colonizers. Um, the first one is the 300 year rule of Spain, the next one is the American rule, and then the invasion of the Japanese. And though we might be independent now from them, their influence still has a very huge role in us. So taking away those influences for this series is not is gonna be challenging, but you know, I'm not being too um, serious on that. I just want to limit the use of um, Spanish names and American names. I want to keep it as Filipino as possible because Filipino, being Filipino, I mean Filipino words sometimes are, you know, just Spanish words used because they were here for like 300 years. So, yeah. Um, embarcadero, for example, is a Spanish word meaning a place near the um, waterfront where there is like shops and ports and malls. It's like, that's why this is Embarcadero de Legazpi. And even Legazpi is a Spanish name. So yeah, I still don't have a name for this place, but this is the waterfront seaside, seaside, wow, seaside shopping mall and area or something. Uh, comment down below any name suggestions. I want to hear your. I want to get some feedback because I might. I might use them. I might not. But it's 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 better to have something given to you rather than just thinking of one from scratch because it's always difficult to start from a blank page and a blank page is very um, anxiety-inducing. Well, anyways, before I get um, so that yeah, so yeah um, that is my plan for the series. Another to give it a little bit of history, give it a little bit of its own life, a little bit of its own breath, to make it a little bit different than the other series um, that you're seeing right now. And also, if you didn't check out my first episode, I explained there how I'm going to be building this city, and what, um, specifically um, how detailed and the scale of the city is. So I'm taking inspiration from Marble Mountain, heavy inspiration from there. Um, one of those being the bridge that I built, you'll see the bridge that I built there from San Francisco, but it's not the bridge from San Francisco. The entire area around it is inspired by it. And um, Magayon won't be um, heavily detailed uh, and it also won't be vanilla. It's gonna, it's gonna go in the middle ground where we it's medium detail it looks good from afar and up close without being too heavy on the computer because sadly my last series Calihandria has been a victim to that and it wasn't able to um it wasn't able to live up to the standards i placed on it and i also wasn't able to live up to it as well so now let's get back to what's happening on the screen now you're seeing me build the um the waterfront mall, seaside mall, I'm just gonna call it the seaside mall because that's essentially what it is. I'm building the seaside mall and I have the inspiration for this is a, a, an actual real place which I just shown you in the first part of the video. I've been there many times but sadly now this this used to be um, very popular back in the early 2010s but after a few years it's some somewhat um, somehow lost most of its um, commercial activities and it's now currently just um, um, re office spaces for um, specific businesses and the one and for you know people uh, who have relations to the port like for construction transportation and etc so now I'm making a um, <coughs> excuse me I'm making a custom parking lot which is which one which is one of the most like, uh, which is one of the most enjoyable parts of this video and I'm using this alternative parking lot asset from I don't know just, I'm just gonna probably link it down below but I won't because I'm so forgetful just remind me um, and using those and these um, concrete concrete pedestrian path networks which are a huge game changer for me because you can essentially make your own sidewalks and your own um, uh, paths or something and if you, you ha you'd have a creative um, it's more it gives you a little bit more of a creative edge with free-flowing lines and etc I'm also using this um, what they call this mod um, the node controller mod which I highly recommend if you want to make sloped um, 
slope intersections or make your rows a little bit wider so yeah this took me in this video it's like almost a third of the video because it essentially took me a third of the time um, building it this which was like three four hours of just building this entire park it took me an entire hour to build this and I cut some of the footage because <laughs> The first time I tried it, it was a little bit messy, but you know, I think the end result is quite amazing. It's quite nice. It's nice. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I think I'm just gonna leave it here because I'm going to be, I'm just gonna be um, building it and detailing it. And I'll be back whenever I have anything left, anything else left to say. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. I'm just gonna with a plug right here and um, like this video if you enjoyed and comment down below any suggestions for what other waterfronts you want me to take inspiration from but i think i'm gonna be sticking with magayon but if you have any other suggestions i might check them out because nothing is nothing's final yet for this series because we're just starting and the more um the more suggestions that i have the better it will be for you know the community so that you get you guys can also have a your your share in this you'd see your own suggestions in the city because you know it's a community it's an amazing community um yeah uh before i ramble again i'm gonna say goodbye to this video and i'll be back when i have something nice to say So now currently I'm landscaping this um, parking lot and I'm using um, various assets which are um, which evoke a sense of tropical tropicalness because that's what we're building. We're a subtropical Magan is a subtropical city and I want to take a huge influence on that so that, you know. And there are not that much Southeast Asian city skylines buildings. There are only a handful that I know. And most of them are very great creators and most of them they are you know they set they paved the path fast they paved the path for what you're seeing now to be able to happen um, here's a preview of the parking lot and I think it turned out quite nice it looks amazing as usual and now we're going to be just finishing off the, the um, landscaping around the mall keeping
looking at a, a medium detail, not too much detail, because we're not going to be um, going here too much. And the scale is, I know, it's very small, it's not that huge. So we use um, smaller trees and um, bushes to make it look as if it were bigger. And I got that idea, I, I got that concept from $2.20 um, YouTube videos to play with um, perspective and scale because it can have a huge impact on what you build. So you just saw a clip of what we're going to be trying to recreate um, now, which was, which is a sleeping lion. It's very iconic in that place, but I don't think I lived up the iconicness of that um, mountain um, but a, or hill or I don't know, natural I don't know if it's natural or artificial anyways I don't think I managed to create a sleeping lion actually because it just looks like a big clump of dirt um, stacked on top of each other but you know I think I'm gonna redo that in the next episode so um, if you want to be updated whenever when I post my new episode um, consider subscribing and turn on the bell notification so that you would be notified whenever I upload a brand new YouTube video um, I still I think the, the landscaping that I did here is you know it's quite good but the terraforming is I suck at terraforming so I tried to terraform all of Magayon but I ended up just you know scrapping the idea and I just went with that I'm gonna build now fix later type of thing and now you're seeing this tactic that I'm using where I put heavier um, heavier trees heavier foliage on the bottom area and making and put, putting smaller trees on higher elevation so that it, make it, it makes it look like it's bigger it's this is a technique used by I don't know, I don't think my artists around, my artists essentially, is when you're, when you're trying to make things look um, bigger. Like the tall buildings, you make them look like they're slimming as they're getting smaller as they rise, like the Burj Khalifa, which makes it look like it's it goes up um, endlessly, especially if you're viewing it from the bottom. So yeah, and also if you want to place foliage, um, a tip that I learned from $2.20 is that you have to place them on the ridges and on the valleys of your build so that because that's where trees are essentially at. I'm not sure, but because in Southeast Asia, in where I live, trees are essentially everywhere. It's from, from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain, all of it is covered in trees, except the flatlands because they are um, farmlands. And speaking of flatlands, here is uh, another land reclaimed area, which is going to be um, the main office. Um, this is a land transportation office in real life, which is where you get your driver's license. Let my driver's license last week. <laughs> no, I'm not. You know, it's, it's trending here in the Philippines. I know Olivia Rodriguez, or Olivia Rodrigo, oh my gosh, don't cancel me. Olivia Rodrigo is actually a half Filipino, so, you know kudos to her for you know, hashtag representation but anyways before I get um, distracted again um, this building that you're seeing here looks identical to the main one and the main one is blue so I opted for blue as well because you know we're striving for realism without being 100% accurate we're just trying to make it look like it exists in the real world even though it doesn't because that's what this series is the series yes the series yes yes my accent is bloating away i'm conscious about my accent so sometimes whenever i get nervous i jump to using a british accent um, but i don't know which part of london which part of the england this accent's from it's all mixed and matched, matched up anyways saliva is fuming not fuming it's forming all over my mouth um, I'm so sorry for those who are listening. If you're still listening, I don't know. It's, it's, it's statistics show from my analytics that most people don't watch after the first um, minute or two of the video and they just skip towards the end and the other areas. But if you're still listening, if you're still here, um, comment down below and comment down below 
that you're still here and uh, maybe I'll do a shout out next time um, um, listening gang I don't know I still don't have a name I think we should do something for the community for you guys that are watching if you're still listening surprisingly still listening comment down below Magayon is such an amazing place and then you'll get a shout out for the next episode so yeah a little bit of a bit a bit of community um, interaction with you guys now I am building the landscaping custom parking lots you know the big deal the ordeal the what you just saw saw what you just saw grammar we don't we don't know her grammar we don't know her uh, what you just what you've just seen and you know just detailing and having fun um, city skylines is quite a relaxing game if you say if i say so myself but what's annoying is that when things don't go your way or when an asset is broken or something is glitching and you don't know how to fix it those are the things that annoy me so much and especially when the game takes so long to load and you don't know what happened when it crashes because um, that happened in Calihandria too often that I decided to end it even though I still had you know huge plans for it Calihandria had a lot to offer but sadly it wasn't able to live up to what it was meant to be it was too great for me um, I was uh, what do you call this I was a victim of my own success yeah that's the thing that I that I was referring to well um, anyways speaking of success um, we've successfully reached the end of this video so I'm going to be continuing the port in the next episode um, but if you want but if you have any suggestions on what I should build next hit me up in the comments because um, it will be a huge help for me to have you guys help me decide what I should do next because I just sometimes end up getting distracted and end up building something out of the blue but I also want to you know be able to have some control on what I am going to build because randomness even though we love randomness we support randomness um, it's so good to have things planned out before you do them well I guess that's it for me um, like if you've enjoyed this video, comment down below what you want to see next, and of course, subscribe. This is Kalihandra, signing off.